Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and in today's After Effects tutorial I'll be showing you how to do this, a kind of Sex in the City style blinged up looping motion title. Now it's a piece of cake to do and you'll be pleased to hear that it doesn't actually require any third-party plugins whatsoever. So if you have After Effects CS3, CS4 or CS5 you'll be able to follow along just fine. So that's enough talk, let's get started. First things first, as always create a new composition. I'll call this one Sexy Title. It's already set up the way I want it to be, so we're looking at 1024 by 70, 576 square pixels, 25 frames per second, and 5 seconds long. We'll just OK that. I'm going to select the uh, horizontal type tool, and we'll create a new piece of text called Sexy. Now if we go to the uh, character panel, you'll see that I've already selected the uh, elephant typeface. Obviously you can choose whichever one you like, um, and it's 200 pixels tall. Now one of the shortfalls of this particular typeface is that the S and any other rounded character tends to look a little bit smaller than any of the square characters. But that doesn't matter because we're going to have a little bit of a play with that. So just select the S on its own and increase the type size from 200 to 300. And then move down to the baseline shift and drop it down to about minus 40. That should do the trick. Now we haven't quite finished with this. We actually want to bring all the text in a little closer to each other. So select the tracking and just close them up so they're nice and close like that. So it's about minus 54. Now what I'm going to do now is actually swap around the stroke and fill values. Um, if you look at the character panel you can see that the uh, the stroke color is actually transparent right now. So if I swap it around I'll have a an outline and no fill as you can see there. Now, what I want is actually a much, much thicker stroke than that. So I'm going to take the uh, stroke width value from one pixel and drag it up to 10. And that should give me pretty much what I want. I'm actually seeing a little bit of overlap here. So I'm going to select the E and the X and ease the tracking off a little bit. OK, that's perfect. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to select the uh, text object that we already, we've already we already created. I might just uh, square that up a little bit, bring that into the center of the frame. So select the uh, the text layer and hit Control and D to duplicate it so we can play with uh, this new layer without uh, messing around with the values underneath it. So I'm going to rename this layer Emboss. Right click on it and go to Layer Styles, Bevel and Emboss. And in the Bevel and emboss values I'm going to select uh, leave inner bevel selected and select uh, chisel hard and as you can see that gives us this nice well-defined kind of 3d structure for the uh, the outline that we created earlier now going back to the uh, the duplicate layer we had earlier so I'll just turn the visibility of the emboss layer off and bring up the previous text layer I'm going to swap the stroke and fill back and we'll go to the color picker and grab a nice bright light blue. Now if I bring the visibility of the emboss layer back you can see we, uh, we're getting somewhere. I'm going to right click on emboss again and select layer styles drop shadow and that just adds a further bit of definition to the whole thing. Now we need a third layer so I'm just going to select the, the base text layer and hit Control D to duplicate it and we'll rename this new layer crystals. Go to the effects and presets panel and type cell and find the cell pattern effect and drag that onto the new crystals layer. Now when I apply that you can see it's not given us quite what we're after as always so we change the default settings. In the uh, cell pattern effects control panel select mix crystals turn the contrast up to 300 which is actually the halfway mark for the slider here uh, type in 0 in the disperse value and reduce the overall size. Now as I reduce the size you can see what's happening here. Basically it's given us a nice mosaic of these crystal shapes. And I think a size of about 20 should do it. If you go any lower than that you run the risk of making it look like a, a swimming pool. Now the one thing you can see here is that uh, it's black and white. We're, we're getting none, none of the, the base color coming through. And that's pretty easy to fix so we'll just uh, right click on the crystal layer, select blending mode and screen and that will take the luminance values and apply them over the top of the, the color layer below. 
The next step is to add um, an evolution animation to this. So at the make sure your timeline indicators at the beginning of the timeline. Check the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Move the timeline indicator to the end of the timeline and just type a value of 1 so you get a full um, 360 degree rotation evolution. Now that won't actually give us a smooth loop so there's just one more thing we need to do. So twill down the evolution options menu and just check the cycle evolution button and what that means is that when you get to the end and cycle back to the beginning it'll be exactly the same frame and all the it'll loop really nicely. I'm just going to add a, another effect to our crystals layer, so type in glow to the effects and presets panel and drag that onto the crystals layer. The default settings are just fine for this, so I'm going to leave them at that, but you can increase the glow radius or the glow value. So if I take the glow radius up to 30 and the intensity maybe up to, I don't know, 1.5, that looks pretty good. So you get this kind of shimmery glow effect, which is exactly what we're after. Now we're not quite there yet. I'm going to select the emboss layer again. One more time, go into the layer styles, and I'm going to select the satin overlay. Now that actually darkens everything down, which we don't really want, so we need to change a few of the settings in the, uh, the satin dropdown. So we're going to the blend mode first and select darken and we'll drop the opacity value down to 30. Uh, we also want to animate this, so I'm just going to bring the uh, timeline indicator back to the beginning, and I'm going to check the stopwatch, uh, the angle stopwatch, to add a keyframe at the beginning, and one more time, scroll the timeline indicator to the end, and just type in a value of 1, so you get a full 360 degree rotation for the angle. Now if I just uh, render that out, you'll see it's pretty subtle, but it gives us just that shift in uh, highlight and shadow around the beveled edge, just to give it that, that sense that the light is actually moving around and it's being affected by the gleam off of the, uh, the colour. So uh, that's almost it. One more thing to do, and of course it's the uh, four colour gradient, so I'm going to hit new solid, we're going to call this background, drag it to the bottom and find the four colour gradient, drag it onto the background and select the colours that are already in the um, glowing centre of our text and just play around with them, maybe make some a little bit more vivid and maybe just a little bit darker. Play around with the positions, adjust the blending mode, soften them all up a bit and you're good, ready to render. And there are a couple of more things you can do, um, we'll select a new adjustment layer and find the curves effect and we can play around with the, uh, the color values maybe just uh, drop the red and increase the blue grab the RGB and maybe put a little S curve into it just to uh, make it a little bit more prominent so that's it, you're out of the render um, as always I hope you found this useful and uh, Keep your eye open for more tutorials from me, Lawrence Grayson, at shortformvideo.com. Thanks for watching.